Even though it doesn't have any dramatic cliff dwellings, the ruin complex at Wupatki is one of the most significant in the entire southwest. The monument contains many well-preserved Pueblo-style ruins that date back approximately 800 years, and five of them are open to the public. A number of special features are present at the largest of these villages, which, along with the artifacts that were found here, indicate it was once a very important place. One of these features is the ball court that's located behind the visitor center. The games that took place here were similar to the ball games held farther south. What makes this particular ball court special is that it's the farthest north of any in the United States. In this case, it's a Hohokam style ball court from the valley near Phoenix, and we know that because of the oval shape and the entryways aligned to the north and south. Also behind the visitor center is a Sanagua style community room, indicated by its circular shape and the doorway aligning to the east. Yet the construction of the village itself is from the Anasazi culture farther north. So we have building styles from three different cultures blending together here at Wupatki. Among the artifacts recovered were the skeletons of 16 scarlet macaws, as well as special pottery jars known to have been used for cacao ceremonies, both of which come from over 1,000 miles away to the south. One of the interesting things about Wupatki is that this particular community room was sometimes used as a ceremonial space, and the Hopi, who now live 45 miles to the east, say the very first Kachina dance ever held, was held here. And this is where the story gets even more interesting, because there are several hidden features built into the landscape itself that I think contributed to this development. One of these features is known as the blowhole, located about 50 feet to the east of the ball court. The blowhole is a small opening in the ground, about 14 inches by 14 inches, where the air gushes either in or out of a massive underground cavern, changing direction with the rise or fall of the above-ground barometric pressure. Another hidden feature is the acoustics. If you wanted to hold a ceremony that involves beating drums and chanting, this is the perfect place to host a large gathering, and there were literally thousands of people living within a day's walk at the time. Standing at the overlook behind the visitor center, take a moment and look around at the bowl shape of the land, then look down on the circular community room below. Imagine it transformed into a dance plaza, with people sitting all along the cliffs, where you are, as well as on the tops of the houses. Once you have that image in your mind, be quiet and listen to the reverberating sound of voices as visitors walk around below you. In this natural amphitheater, under normal conditions, it's quite easy to speak to people in the village below from the overlook, without having to raise your voice much. So, one person would have been able to speak to thousands without a microphone, and it must have been quite impressive when large cottonwood drums were reverberating across the desert landscape like a giant heartbeat, carrying Hopi prayers for rain up into the sky. If you're planning a Southwest vacation and you're interested in visiting ruins and rock art along the way, check out the Wanderer's Guide to Hiking the Southwest, a series of ebooks with GPS coordinates to over 3,000 hidden gems like Wupatki, along with tons of free campsites, swimming holes, and hiking trails. Visit us at www.thewanderers.guide and get started planning your next vacation.